Human history is filled with follies. And we keep repeating the same damn mistakes over and over again. We don't even wait for a generation to pass sometimes before we launch into a new mistake. There's a lot to be angry about in this world. There are many ways to uh, deal with that anger. I deal with it by making art. There's a rich and terrific history of artists protesting war. I feel privileged to be a part of that. I'm often asked why I make teapots. Well, I use a teapot only metaphorically, really. I'm more interested in conveying ideas than I am tea. In 1980, I first came to Montana. I love the expanse of landscape. But I don't know that the landscape really affects the work. I'm, I'm working out of a political landscape, really. I'm getting good reduction. I've reduced the uh, oxygen level in the kiln. The flames just come jumping out because they're literally seeking oxygen. I'm just putting a little more gas in so it'll fire a little quicker. I do about a four-day firing cycle. Drives my wife crazy. I, you know, I get up every two hours to check the kiln. I was born in Chicago shortly after World War II. I've always made things by hand. When I was a kid, I was constantly making models. My father was an immigration lawyer. We had many gifts from Chinese clients in our house. And so from a very early age, I became very fascinated with the intricate, with detail, uh, with very tight, meticulous carving. When I was a kid, I remember seeing the very stark footage of the discovery of the concentration camps, the piles of bodies had a very, very strong impact on my life. I'm carving ears. There are two different clays that I layer so that what I get in the end is, is something that looks very much like sedimentary rock. It's part of this ongoing project that I call the Legacy Project. And it consists of a pile of ears. The pile keeps changing. And there's so many different layers of meaning. You know, the fact that ears have long been used as a way of counting the dead in war. The other thing about the pile of ears is I was very much trying to recapture the sense of uh, uh, the pile of shoes. After the Holocaust, the remains of people that are gone. So there are ears that are stone deaf. They're not learning the lessons that are all around us. You know, I work from a place that's, that's deep inside me that, 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 that I'm very passionately angry about. I'm pissed off that there are nuclear weapons, you know? If an artist can't say what they really feel in their art, you know, what the hell is the point? Okay, right there. Got it. Okay.
The vessel is really the primary canvas of ceramics, and uh, the teapot is the most complex of vessels. You can really play with a lot of images and juxtapose a lot of different images to build a narrative. Urban destruction from World War II becomes a teapot. This is the handle, uh, the lid right here just kind of lifts out. And uh, this rubble creates a vessel which connects with this kind of tilted, broken chimney, which becomes a spout. The teapot was literally invented in Yixing, China, about 1500 AD. Suddenly, there was an explosion of creativity. All different forms, from segmented forms to natural forms to geometric forms. I'm inspired by these pots. I'm inspired by the craftsmanship, the finesse of line, the compositions. But while I imitate the pots in a technical and sometimes aesthetic sense, I'm not making Yixing pots. I'm trying to make pots that have a separate cultural identity, that speak of my times, my country, my concerns. These are going to be for clay tiles in framed editions. Press molding is kind of like printmaking, really, in ceramic. I like the hand nature of this process. There are ways of me mechanically doing this uh, where they come out perfect and they'd be much quicker to produce, but uh, I'd lose a little bit of that handmade quality. You know, when I was in graduate school, there's sort of a disdain for craftsmanship, kind of challenging the status quo at the time. People said my work was too small, tight, and precious, and uh, I took it as a compliment. There was a Chinese master who once said that to make art, you develop an infallible technique and then place yourself at the mercy of inspiration. And I like that. You know, a work of art can't rest on technique alone. There has to be a strong idea, a strong concept behind that. cracking on this. There's a high degree of loss with this technique. This is a pretty one. Our human species is very amazing. You know, we have these two potentials between creation and destruction. If all creative people stop making art, I really think we'd perish as a species. I'm not going to make the ear that saves the world. I'm not going to make the teapot that saves the world. But, you know, Gandhi said, you drop enough grains into the mightiest machine, grains of sand, and you'll stop that machine. So I figure, OK, this is my contribution to man's collective creativity. Mm -hmm.